It's already on. You just point okay. and shoot. Yep. Oh, good time. Hey everyone, welcome back to No Tears Frontiers. We've been going around the world for the last five years on our KTM 1190. 26 countries so far. 25? 25 countries so far. <laughs> But in about a week, is going to be 26 as we make our way into Canada. Or do we already count that one? We've been to Canada I don't before. know what we're doing. I don't know where we've been. But I'm glad you're here with us, folks. Yes, thank you for joining us on our channel where you can ride around the world with us. And currently, we are on our journey to the top of Alaska. So we started in Boise, which is the capital city of Idaho. an amazing time but it was time that we head out to the overland expo in its inaugural location that was bend oregon that's oh, right red redmond oregon redmond well they're right next to they each are. other good morning tim and i have been staying in this lovely camper van and now we are packing up and heading off to oregon which we've never been to on the motorcycle i've never been there before at all heard amazing things about it and we're going to the first ever Pacific Northwest Overland Expo. So we're very excited. Idaho. Overland Expo Pacific Northwest. Here we come. <laughs> so this is the first time that the Overland Expo was going to have it at Pacific Northwest location in Bend, Oregon and they had been planning this for a long time unfortunately it didn't work out for years but now it was finally happening and we were super excited yeah. also i had never been to oregon before you had been i had as a small child yeah don't remember much of anything but <laughs> apparently i don't remember much of a lot so. <laughs> morning from Boise and right before we left our friend Brandon said to us oh just by the way don't forget to get gas in Vail because there's oh, yeah. a huge stretch without uh, any gasoline yeah. and we were like oh yeah sure thank you so much for that information but in the back of my mind I was like yeah we've been through Patagonia. I was like dude we've been across Argentina <laughs> but sure enough geez. Wow I yeah. I running on empty. So we passed Vale and we had just filled up in Boise and so we were like, ah, we don't have to fill up again. Yeah. I mean, that would be just it's silly. Tough. <laughs> we kept going and going and going. Eastern Oregon is kind of this vast landscape that um, has these huge open vistas. It's really, really beautiful, but it does get to be quite remote. Yeah, which we like. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I don't know how them folks on wagons did it way back in the day, because there was <laughs> not a lot of convenience stores. <laughs> no. We chugged along, and I wouldn't say we were on fumes, but I was like, the next guy with the bucket of gas we see, we're going to buy some. So finally we 
did come across a little gas station. And uh, it was a great rest stop. We got out our snacks and we were able to fill up on gas. But as we were filling up, uh, this woman came out and smiled to us and stood there. Oh yeah. And I was like, hello. <laughs> and she just stood there. She was very friendly, very nice. Yeah. But I thought, you know, like, okay, we got this. We've, we've done filled this up. before. <laughs> we filled up the motorcycle before with gasoline. Okay. I didn't realize that Oregon was a full service state. That's right, it didn't even dawn on me till now. I remember like her being weird, but I, didn't, <laughs> you know, I, was, I just let it go by. I was like, and you brought it up creepy. again. I'm like, yeah, you better, yeah, she was creepy. We didn't have to talk about it, but now <laughs> I know exactly why. Yes. Thank you for letting me thank know you, that. Lady. Yeah. Oh, for... Thank you. Oh. <laughs> Well, also, thank you to the lady yeah. for... Yeah, uh... trusted me with filling up my own gas tank. You know, in Africa, when we were there, they all, like, they had to pump it because it was their, you know, their job, and God That's bless. Right. But, like... In fact, most of the world, it is full-service gas stations. It's not, like, something that we've never come across before. It's, no, <laughs> but, like, when full-service, when somebody's pumping up my gas tank, it could take anywhere from five to, like, three days. You know, it's just... <laughs> trick... Five to three days. <laughs> it's just like a baby squirrel urinating. I'm like, dude, <laughs> more. Mas quantos gasolino, por favor. <laughs> but anyway, I'm very thankful that this lady let us pump our own gas. That's right, and, she was very nice. And, and we started seeing other people that were obviously going to the Overland Expo as well. Yeah, it was so cool, right at the gas station. Yeah, Two the one gas like, station. You're going. gas station we had a bit more of a stretch until we got to Bend, Oregon. It was beautiful, beautiful scenery. But the road was, it had a lot of straightaways and again yeah. it was very open, very vast and it had been a long day and I, I know that you were getting quite tired. I needed more caffeine. Those straightaways. Ooh, it was hard. It was hard for me to keep my eyes open, but thankfully, we yep. both did, and we were able to get to Bend, Oregon, or Redmond, Oregon, where the Pacific Northwest Overland Expo was going to take place. camp area immediately I noticed wow there is a lot of beautiful green grass here oh for sure this is and very amazing for we're not us. knocking Arizona or Colorado or Virginia head grass as mm -hmm. well but it was quite dusty yeah very dusty you know there are venues that are you know that are used for expos and trade shows of all sorts and so mm -hmm. they're not you know but bot botanical expos <laughs> by any means but the grass is at a premium it is <laughs> but here in oregon oh grass was the law yeah. of the land it so was amazing green green and not just that but you could see these snow-capped mountains yep. all around the expo it was like they were being showcased in the distance this is true and uh, the mountains are out of view over here but let's get let's do a whole yeah. walk around the bikes nice Pretty, pretty mountain. Yeah, we had the three sisters and then yeah, the, bachelor, the bachelor. And then there was like a broken top or something. Crooked um, tooth. Yeah. <laughs> three toed Simon. <laughs> nope, that one wasn't one of them. <laughs> Some of those I made up. <laughs> Pacific Northwest was fantabulous. It was such a great time.
We got to see lots of old friends yeah. and made some new friends. Wow, amazing. Wow, what type of vehicle is it? I don't know anything about these. That's a, it was a Swiss fire truck. No. Oh, this is a dream home. An oven, what's this? A freezer. A freezer. A freezer. This is the stove. Yeah. Oh, gorgeous. We have a full sink with water. <laughs> oh my gosh. Does it fold? It seems to fold. Yeah, it can go down and make another bed. Yeah, there's a washing machine. Oh, what? <laughs> yeah. No. Okay, so that folds up, it folds up. obviously. And then you have a shower. No way. Oh my goodness. Yeah. This is amazing. Wow, I'm so high up. I know, right? Wow. Okay, here we go. Okay. Yay! There's the pretty girls. <laughs> and then this. <Yay! laughs> we actually had a fellow book booth brother, an yes. author, whose name was Matt. What's the name of your YouTube channel? Oh, it's Giddy Up Adventures. Oh, awesome. Who is an author of a book called The Topography of Fear. Yes. Um, good morals and good strategy on how to overcome some things while traveling on a motorcycle. Um, awesome dude, awesome book. And Absolutely. I wish my book had the same, like a, a good strong message in mm. it besides just you can go out and have fun and it's amazing and here's some humor, but he's He's got a good uh, point and a good message that I, I would like the world to, to, to be able to absorb as well. Absolutely. I think every single one of us struggle with fear at some point in time, especially traveling. There's so much of the unknown and fear, anxiety, all of that is a major theme of his book. Yes. They call me No Fear Notes here. <laughs> Do they? No, no, I call myself that sometimes. Oh, okay. But I don't tell anybody because I have a fear of public speaking. Oh, yeah. So it's kind of contradictory. That's a word. Well, moving on. We also saw our good friend Amanda Zitto. Yeah. Oh, Amanda, yay! She has a YouTube channel called As the Magpie Flies. Yeah. She has been a big inspiration for us and has helped us along on our YouTube journey. So it was absolutely wonderful seeing her. We first met her last year at the Overland Expo West in Flagstaff, mm -hmm. Arizona. And so it was really great running into her again. And we didn't just run into her. We she camped camp next right to next each to other. Really cool. We hung out all the time. It was great. She it presented. Was so much fun. Yeah. Yes. This time she was presenting. This is true. We mm -hmm. saw her at West and speaking at West from previous years, Pete West. Yes. Who was our, our savior. So, so big shout out to him. He's on yes. the he's he's on the road himself. So yeah, this, he's permanently an overlander. Yeah. So this whole community, it's like you know we're getting the band back together once a year, practicing the same licks. You know, made up some of our own new ones. Outdoor eats. Fast, easy, and tasty recipes. All ten ingredients or less. Thirty minutes or less. Pocket-sized cookbook, so you can just put right along with your rig. But if you're provisioning along the road and need some fast recipes ideas, we got you covered. So hit up outdooreats.com. You too. You are awesome, Chef Corso. Did you the, the staff there? The uh, volunteers are just are amazing. Best. It's just a whole experience from upper management to the volunteers, to the presenters, to the attendees. Mm -hmm. It's just a, an entire pool of awesome, like-minded, very cool people. That's so right. it's just fun on multiple, multiple levels. Did you win? Batman so let's do a Cascade Moto. Let's do a $50 gift certificate to Cascade Moto. We also Moto. saw our motorcycle traveling friends that we had seen before at other expos, Michael and Angela, also known oh, as yeah. Michael Langela. And they are now going to start their round the world motorcycle journey. And they've also have a little foundation that they've created called the Toonie Project. They're Canadian. And so in Canada, they have the loonies, which are $1 coins. And then the toonies, yep. which are $2 coins. In America, we have loony toonies. We have loony toonies. <laughs> yeah, a lot of that going on. <laughs> in their foundation, they are raising money to dollars at a time. The money goes straight to orphanages all over the world that they will be visiting and volunteering at. Yeah, so a bunch of good people doing 
great things. And yes. then there's us. And then, you know, <laughs> you know Bill Jagu, love the, oh, the gentleman to death. He's yeah. there. So it's good to see Dart training in action. Absolutely. And his son, Ben. And his son, Ben. You know, giving presentations, meeting new people, trying to make some of them laugh, some of the jokes bombing, some of the jokes <laughs> doing all right, you know. But, That's uh, right. <laughs> overall, just a really good weekend of, you know, selling books. And it wasn't about selling books, you know. It was, no. a, it was a good weekend of... You know, just getting in front of people and being just as excited as, as they are. When Spreading the inspiration yeah, around. Yeah, indeed. It's a beautiful disease. One of the highlights of the expo for us was this motorcycle competition yeah. thing that they had on the last day. kind of done by Bill Dragu and the Dart team. Yeah, and it's the motorcycle games, the rally games. Yes, and I've never been to anything do, like it. I do not partake in them because by Sunday, my soul and my brain is emotionally <laughs> drained. Bill and Ben had like, they constantly thought, I was like, oh, you should really go, you should really go. And then I say, I do, I will, and then they don't. And that's just been kind of like, you know, the what, how we've been doing it. You can chop all that to make sense, right? <laughs> yeah, no, maybe. probably not. So this time we actually committed to going. Mm -hmm. They said they were going to hold a two up slow race Bam. specifically for us. And we thought, all right, first of all, we ride two up all the time. Yeah. That's the way we do it. So we're already good with that. Second of all, we are super slow. We travel all over the world very, very slowly. It's year five. Yeah. <laughs> and we've only gone through three continents. So in the grand scheme of things, we're quite slow on the road. We're like, man, we are going to ace Nailed this two-up slow race. Yeah. <laughs> First, they had a regular yeah, slow race regular without two-up. And yeah. you participated in I that. I did, I did all right. Yeah. I got in fourth, I think. Yeah, so you got into the final round. This is true. You were one of the top placers of the first round. Bam, and bam. then you got into the finalist round. We were giving place. away prizes, and I didn't want to win my own book, so I'm just going to throw it out there that I threw the game. I threw oh, it. right. Yeah. And, and I'm on a KTM. It's ready to race. It's not ready to slow. <laughs> the second game was the, the <clears throat> smash a barrel with your front tire. Right. So the point of it is to move the barrel along in a straight line, and whoever moves it the farthest in the straight line wins without falling over or putting their foot down. Yeah, but what I I touch the barrel and it it knocks to one direction, <laughs> and then I safely pass it and go the other direction. And yeah, I, f I feel like that's how you should overcome obstacles. You shouldn't try to continuously hit the same log that's blocking <laughs> you in your single track. Spot. Yes, this is a very particular skill set, this one. <laughs> and I realized you don't have to be good at it, you just got to be better than your competitor. <laughs> and it just happened that my competitor was better than me. He had yeah. the same outlook, but uh, yeah, but yeah. so I, I sucked at that one. <laughs> Threw in the white flag and stood on the, the sidelines as they did the, the limbo race. Yeah, the limbo! <laughs> That is really cool to watch. It's so amazing to see these phenomenal motorcycle limboers just ducking really low underneath their windshield. They're taking their mirrors off. Doing the Superman. Doing the Superman. I mean, they are yeah. just so impressive. But eventually, 
the bar gets so low that nobody can go under it anymore. Yeah. Woo! You got a shot. Yeah, look at the bears, look at the bears. <laughs> That's pretty much the bar I've set. <laughs> It's really, it's really, it's really, really low. low. Uh, then after that was the two up couple race. That's right. Can you, it's already on. You just point okay. and shoot. Yep. Thank you. And we thought, okay, who is going to compete against us? Because all of these yeah. are single riders. Wow. But Amanda jumped on the back with somebody. Yeah, it Bill. was a whole field of it people. Was, yeah, <laughs> two heats that merged into one heat. Yes. Yeah. So we headed off, you know, very slowly. Yeah. <laughs> no! No! Good time. And unfortunately, I you stalled you. out. I did. I was last. I was I was we first last. to suck, which is last place. We, we were last in the slow race in a bad way. And then like I went to the sidelines in defeat and sadness and I, I cried a little. But then there was gonna be another heat of the yeah. same, it was just like you a- You like, try again. A, 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 yeah, a pity party for me. And so I exactly. did it again. And I think we got in last again. We, we got in last again. But so I didn't stall out. No, so you did not stall out. I improved at sucking, but yeah, I went <laughs> faster than everybody else. Yes. But I think again, dead last. Dead last once again. You know what? I blame the fact that we had an extra gallon of gas on one side of the motorcycle. I did it on we purpose. We were packed up with yeah. our luggage and we had a water bladder on the other side. I mean, we were not it the was most too balanced. too up and overloaded. And we were the only race. overloaded ones. Yes. Yes. There will be some frames to be used. Yeah. <laughs> but that was by choice. That was by choice. That's because right. Because I thought it looked cool. And, and I still we wanted are to... too up and overloaded. Yeah. And I, I thought <laughs> that, you know, that's what I'm used to, right? It was too much stuff. And so <laughs> if I was on anything lighter, I'd be like, I don't know, this thing's like bucking like a horse, you know? Right, right. So it turns out that we are not as slow as we thought we were. Thank you all so much. This is literally the best rally you know games what? that Overland Expo has ever seen in its 12 and a half year history yeah. of yeah. Overland yeah. Expos. Yeah. So this is amazing. Thank you guys all so much. Ride fast, take chances, and I don't know, pick up your friend's motorcycle. <laughs> so overall good day yeah, uh, fantastic expo sold some books made some friends got to see new friends made yeah. connections for a little bit further down the road it's just always a good time there's never never a bad moment at the expo that's right and one of the friends that we met at the expo Maddie, yeah. who had the book, The Topography of Fear, invited us to go on some roads that were some of his favorite yeah. roads in the area since he is from... He's an Oregonian. Oregon, that's yeah, right. This is true. <laughs> and so that will be in our next episode. And I hope you like this one. If you did, please give us a big thumbs up and hit the subscribe button below. Ding, ding. And we'll be seeing you next time. Stay safe, everybody. Bye. Peace. Two dollars at a time um, to four that. Two four. <laughs> two, just to be clear. Two. <laughs> but now it was finally happening. Now it was finally happening. So we headed off from Boise in the morning. <laughs> Boise in the morning. <laughs>